It's number one best-selling author and motivate. Oops. Hey, it's number one best-selling. Is that Chuck too loud? Hey, it's Equal Man. Thank you for joining us for today's seven super tips. I'm super pumped. We have a repeat guest, first time in history. You wanted more from her. You wanted more tips from her. So we have Brene Brown with seven additional super tips. The, the definition of boundary that I use in the book. Boundary is simply what's okay and what's not okay. What I think we do is we don't set boundaries. We let people do things that are not okay or get away with behaviors that are not okay, then we're just resentful and hateful. Me, I'd rather be loving and generous and very straightforward with what's okay and what's not okay. To assume the best about people is almost an inherently selfish act because the life you change first is your own. Then one day I found myself on a military base talking to special forces, and I just asked a simple question. Give me an example of courage that you've seen or witnessed in your life, or that you know, you've done yourself, that didn't require uncertainty, risk, and emotional exposure, which is mm. the definition of vulnerability. Give me mm. a single example of courage that did not require that. And there was just silence until one guy just raised his hand and said, three tours, ma'am. There is no courage without vulnerability. Four skill sets. Can you rumble with vulnerability? Can you stay in tough things when they get uncomfortable and awkward or do you tap out? Mm -hmm. Two, mm -hmm. and, and this is a hard one, living into your values. Are you clear about what your values are and have you operationalized those into behaviors? Do you know what behaviors support your values, what don't? Mm -hmm. Three, braving trust. Can you build trust and be trustworthy? Mm -hmm. And the last one, which I think was really interesting, was learning how to get back up, learning how to rise. Because we found that people are more willing to be courageous up front if they know how to rise. And so courage is contagious and we can teach it, we can learn it, we can measure it. And we have to create cultures where being armored all the time is not rewarded behavior. The greatest casualty of trauma is vulnerability. The, the worst thing we lose in trauma is vulnerability. And let's be very clear about what constitutes trauma. Racism is trauma. Poverty is trauma. Classism, trauma. Homophobia, heterosexism, trauma. And so the, the biggest casualty of that is I can't be vulnerable. Well, when vulnerability, the, the ability to really be who we are, becomes a realm of only the privileged, we have lost our capacity to create a school, a home, and a country that we love. I don't think you can get to courage without the capacity to deal with uncertainty, risk, and emotional exposure. And we've mythologized vulnerability. I'm not saying be vulnerable for vulnerability's sake. I'm saying when things get hard and uncomfortable, don't tap out of difficult conversations. Stay in them, lean into them, even when they're uncomfortable, awkward, hard. Find moments of collective joy and pain and be a part of them the peace with people you want a frog in the arm come to the rail sing grieve together in community and we don't do enough of that and it's not just around church it's about music sometimes sport find ways to be with people in communion that you don't know as a reminder that that connection between all of us can, is, is real and alive, whether we forget it or not. And so, to me, vulnerability is our most accurate measure of courage. I mean, it's pretty powerful when I have 13,000 pieces of data collected over 12 years that I cannot find a single incident or story of courage that was not completely underpinned by vulnerability. I think the problem arises that it's, there are so many little paradoxes with vulnerability, and one of them is that vulnerability is courage in you, but weakness in me. When I meet you, it's the first thing I look for in you, but it's the last thing I want to show you in me. 
And so I think to really put ourselves out there knowing that if we do that enough, we're going to fail. I just don't think it gets more courageous than that. When, when perfectionism is driving, shame is always riding shotgun. We struggle with perfectionism in areas where we feel most vulnerable to shame. Does that make sense? So we're all comfortable saying, yeah, I'm a little perfectionistic, which is code for like, I do things really well. Um, <laughs> but I don't really, I'm not comfortable saying I have shame. But perfectionism, what is that? I call it the 20 ton shield. Here's what perfectionism really is. It's a way of thinking that says this, if I look perfect, live perfect, work perfect, I can avoid or minimize criticism, blame, and ridicule. All perfectionism is, is the 20 ton shield that we carry around hoping that it'll keep us from being hurt. When in truth, what it does is it keeps us from being seen. Those are seven super tips from Brene Brown. If you didn't listen to the original version with Brene Brown, go ahead and download that today. But remember, this show is designed to unlock and unleash your inner superpowers. To ensure you don't miss the next episode, make sure you hit that subscribe button below and also go and subscribe on iTunes or Spotify for the Super You podcast. And until then, remember, it's not what we take from the world, it's what we leave behind. Isn't it romantic? Right. <laughs> hey, it's number one best-selling author and keynote speaker, Eric Qualman. Oh, let me do that again. Hey, it's number one best-selling author. Uh, <clears throat>